I've already walked uh, about 10 and a half kilometers now. I'm going to take you on a 10 and a half kilometer walk back to Aguas Calientes from the hydroelectric or the hydroelectric plant. This is what I like to call the back way to Aguas Calientes. Um, I made this trip many, many times. So I decided I would um, do a little video, show you what it's like, some things along the way that you probably will miss if you don't go, if you don't have a guide of some kind. So come along and enjoy it. I think it's going to be fun. Okay, the first thing, is you got to make a pretty good little climb up to the highest railroad track because that's where they they end up as they zigzag and switch back to make the climb above the river. It's not as bad as it looks, but if you're not in good shape and not used to climbing up, it can be a little tough. I'm a little out of breath from climbing, but I wanted to show you this trail here if you can find it. It's pretty hard to see, but it goes off about 50 meters and ends up at the River Intihuatana site, which is one of the most significant and important sites in the entire region. This is the River Intihuatana. It's one of three surviving Intihuatana stones carved completely out of one single stone that the uh, Spanish left intact. This is the only one that is down at low altitude and sits solely by itself. The most famous is at Machu Picchu. The other one is at Pisac. And then there's this one down close to the, uh, what's now the Hidroelectrica. These two basins actually align perfectly east and west. As to what they're for, nobody knows. This was once a fountain. You can see the four holes at the top. It was a series of baffles that allowed them the water to flow evenly coming down from somewhere up the mountainside, probably from a no longer existing stream. Just to the bottom of it, you can see a uh, small cave, which does have room for someone. This is the platform just below the Intihuatana stone. It's just amazingly carved. Up above, you can see the stone itself. Looks like no one's been here for quite a while, maybe since the last time I was here about four weeks ago. If you come here, make sure that you bring lots of insect repellent because the insects will eat you up alive here. Notice the small step motif on one corner here. This is really common in Inca constructions. The nomon, or the, uh, the part that sticks up on each of the three Intihuatanas, kind of like a sundial, which is not what it was used for, in case someone tries to tell you that. This one was broken off at some point. I've heard different stories, but honestly, it looks like it was broken off a long, long time ago. These massive stone walls still exist today. When you get to the top, you'll see a sign that says to Machu Picchu, just turn right and head down the tracks. There is a sign you might see that says 12 kilometers, but it's not. It's a little bit less than 10 kilometers. The Intihuatana restaurant is actually a pretty cool place to stop. Problem is, it's very early in your hike up, so you may not be that excited about taking a break. If you haven't eaten though, the food is good. And La Senora does have the, by far the coldest drinks along the route. So if you want a cold soda or water, this is the place to get it. As you hike up the railroad tracks, just after you leave the Intihuatana restaurant, you can hear the sound of the river roaring very strong to your right. Pay close attention to this sign. 
It says, don't, something about don't take a chance on your life along the tracks. Stay off of them. People have died here. So I do not recommend walking on the tracks for the most part. The trail's good. There's no point to do it. High up there is La Montaña Machu Picchu, the big mountain above the ruins. Can you see the, the green line that goes across the cliffside? That line is actually an Inca road. Yes, I'm being honest. That is an Inca road, the road that connects Machu Picchu with its sister site, Yactapata. How they did that and who was brave enough to cross that, that trail alongside the cliff, I, I can't understand. I sure wouldn't do it. You only see a few places of the river down there. But what I can see is dark clouds in front of me because that's the direction I'm going. Oh, I hope it doesn't rain. This thing that looks like an overpass just amazes me because I have no idea what it is and I haven't talked to a soul yet who can tell me what it is. You know, people have their ideas, but no one can tell me exactly. It looks like, like, a, like a highway overpass. I, I just don't know. There's nothing on either side of it. It ends to the right and just falls off. It, it makes no sense to me. Someone spent a lot of time building this thing. One of the things that you really got to remember to do is always stop and take a look behind you because the views to the rear sometimes can be just as beautiful or more so than the ones in front of you. You never know what you'll see. At kilometer 119, there's a couple of interesting features here. One, this is the place where the river goes from being very calm and, and where it dips into the gorge and becomes a roaring mass. Here's a good view of it. Interestingly, these little sets of steps where you'll probably step up to get a nice view if you're taking pictures here, they're not made to get photos. As you get up to the top and be really careful you don't take, you don't step too far, that big stone on the other side was actually part of the foundation of an Inca bridge that went to the other side of the river. You can just see some of the stonework on the left side, not too far below the top. Other than that, there's no way you know, but this was the location of an Inca bridge. I'm not sure if you can see, but on the other side, there are some like straw baskets hanging down. Those are actually the nests of Oropendula birds. They're a really cool bird. They're not so common here. But they are here, as evidenced by the nest. I've never seen them, and I've only heard one one time. Their call is very distinctive, but I have seen nests in several places. Just another 150 meters or so, you come across a rail bridge that crosses the river at a really quiet point. The good thing about this is someone built a, a uh, pedestrian bridge to the side because it would be really dangerous to walk across that bridge. This is a good spot to stop and relax, enjoy the views. Quite often you'll see birds here. I've seen some gorgeous birds. If after a couple of kilometers you're getting hungry, this place has great hamburgers and fries. 
I like to stop here and let La Senora cook me something to eat. Trust me, this is good. For about $3, it's a great meal along the way. Along this stretch at kilometer 118, the river's a little farther off to your right. So it's a great place to go slow, listen for birds. I've seen quite a few animals along here. Agoutis are really common but there are also possums. If you get really lucky, you might see a bear, but I kind of doubt it with as many people that live along here. There are spectacle bears in the Machu Picchu sanctuary, but it's very rare that they're seen. In a slight rain, really light for oh probably a good half hour now, and I still have over four miles to go to get back to Aguas Calientes. But it's not the first time this has happened, and the scenery just is so beautiful. I can't even think about the rain. At kilometer 117, be sure to look on the other side of the tracks for places to get some beautiful photos. Behind you, if you look back, you can likely get a gorgeous picture of the river and La Montaña Machu Picchu. This is the spot where a couple of years ago, I filmed a river otter coming down to the river's edge. Up above, I'm not sure if you can see it, there are some Inca ruins. There are actually several large ruins scattered along that hillside. I'm not sure how clear this is in the video, but you can take the cable across and up above are a series of uh, Inca ruins, including some terraces. It's a pretty cool sight. We could have walked across it three weeks ago, but not now. I think most people don't even notice this wall right beside the tracks at a little past kilometer 117. I'm guessing it's Inca because it is massive, probably 12 to 15 feet high in some places. And fairly covered with overgrowth from the jungle, but it's still very, very spectacular. You can stop it at Paradero. Inca at uh, kilometer 116 and a half. But this is rarely open for some reason. Even when there was no pandemic, there were still not so many people here. So I'm not sure what's going on with this. But they do sell some things and you can stop here. Looks like it might have been a cool place before, but there's no one even here out front selling things right now. Paradero, by the way, just means a stop, like a bus stop or a train stop in this case. It's not a good sign up ahead. The mountains are barely visible behind the low clouds. Hopefully they don't mean rain, but that's not a good sign usually.
At about kilometer 114, we come upon Jardine de Mandor at a place long known as Mandor Pampa, which is a big flat area where people have been growing crops here and things like bananas and corn and I think even some coffee for well over a century, just below Machu Picchu. This place has been in the family of Nelly, for, who runs the place, for several decades now. It is definitely worth going up to. I think it costs about 15 soles for foreigners, but it is more than worth it. Great hike up, two beautiful waterfalls toward the, toward the end. I would you like to have to take this to get home every time? These folks have to ride across in a basket just to get their to their house. This is where you leave the tracks. When you get to this point, Leave the tracks and go to the right because the tracks go on through a tunnel and you want to get on the road that goes along beside, that goes to Machu Picchu. If you follow it down, you'll meet up with the road that goes to, that goes up to Machu Picchu. They'll join in about another 150 meters. I'm actually passing the bus bridge and the pedestrian bridge that cross the river and go up to Machu Picchu. Here they both are. Get a look at the two bridges. When you get to the bottom, there's a nice little camping spot here. There is a butterfly farm. And this is where you meet up with the road that goes to Machu Picchu. Be careful, the buses, buses keep this road pretty busy. They'll always honk and they're, they're good about going around you, but they will definitely honk if you're in the way. At this point, you got about a half kilometer to go. You're probably breathing hard. I know I usually am coming up because it's a little more climbing than you've been doing. But be careful along this part of the road. The buses will go right beside you, but they never hit anyone. so. I don't think you have to worry. Just make sure you stay on this path. And if you want to stay by the bridge, that's not a bad, by the rail, I'm sorry. That's not a bad idea. You can see Aguas Calientes or Machu Picchu Pueblo starting to appear up in the distance. It's a beautiful sight. Make sure to get some pictures along the river on the way. This time of year and even more in the next couple of months, the river will be raging and the photos will be really spectacular.